All right, so today I'm going to make my non-playing character follow somebody around with his head turn, right? So he's got his tur head turning here. And I thought that'd be really cool, especially if we add this to the shoulder like I'm going to do next week for aiming at stuff, right? So he's looking up. Now he's not looking up. And he's just following that back and forth. So let's get a fresh world and see how to do that. So I'm not using animations or anything. I'm just using my Motor 6D on my character. So this is a fresh world right here. You should probably have this Home tab selected. We're going to go to Plugins, Build Rig, R15, Mesh Rig. Cool. All right, now on that dummy, let's add some body colors. Let's see, uh, let's look for a B. There we go, body colors. And let's take a look at the head real quick. So go to the dummy, go down to the head, and look at the neck. That is the Motor 6D. So if you're using an R6, look to see where the neck is on the R6. I think they have everything in the torso in the R6. I don't know. I haven't looked at them in a while. I'm better with the R15s, but that's what we're going to use. We're going to use the neck, all right? It's on the head. Just remember that. So on the dummy, let's add a script. Boom. And we need a variable for our character, local char script.parent. And we also need a vari variable for our humanoid root part because that's position and orientation, char, uh, wait for child, humanoid root part. We need our head, right? Local head. That's going to be on the char, the character, wait for child, head. And we also need our neck, right? And that's going to be on the head, not the char. We'll say wait for child again, neck. Cool. So let's do a function, local function, and we'll do it to find the closest player. Find closest player HRP. Humanoid root part. I usually look for the humanoid root part. So dist is going to be the distance of interest. Now, let's get a variable. Closest HRP. We'll call that nil, right? We'll initialize that to nil, which is nothing. So we'll return nil if we, if we don't find anybody. All right, so let's go do a for loop for INV in pairs through the game players service. We'll say this is a colon right here. See that those two dots get children. Oh, do. So we're going to go through all the players in the game, find out who's the closest. And we've done this with like with uh, characters in the workspace. This is actually the player server, so they're returning players, not characters. I think I misspoke. So let's get the character from the player. So we'll say local, I'll call this a temp char for temporary character. V character or V dot character added weight, just in case there's something wrong with the character at the moment. We'll just wait a little bit. And then let's get our temporary humanoid root part from the teacher, all right? So we'll say find teacher, find first child. That's, oops, a big view there. Humanoid root part. If THRP, ah, uh, where's my T? THRP exists, then let's find the distance between us, our HRP right here, and the temporary HRP of one of these players that we're looping through in the game. So we'll say local temp, I'll do TMP for temp, temp distance. Um, we got our THRP, whoops, I spelled that wrong, capital THRP position minus our HRP position. And we'll do the magnitude. Magnitude is the absolute distance between two vectors, the vectors being our positions. It's basically three, um, three valued position, right? An X, Y, and a Z. So if we say if the temp distance is less than our distance of interest, then ooh, let's pay attention to that. That's close enough. We're going to say closest HRP is now, at least temporarily, our temp HRP. And then our new distance is equal to our temp distance, right? Then when we loop through again, if we find something closer, that becomes the new distance. That becomes the new HRP, right? And then when we get all the way to the end of the loop, we'll know who our closest person is. 
we will return the closest HRP and let's return the distance. We're gonna need that for the up and down look. We're gonna to need to know how far away somebody is in order to know how far up we can look. All right, so now let's do a while loop, an update loop. While, we'll do a wait, right? So it's gonna be like 0 0.03 seconds. Do, let's get our, whoops, closest HRP and the distance from our fine closest player HRP, pass in 100 studs. That'll be the distance of interest. I just picked that randomly. And then if the closest HRP exists, we found somebody, somebody's within 100 studs. Let's get our direction to him. So the direction will be the closest HRP's position minus our HRP's position. And we want to normalize that to a unit vector. A unit vector is a vector of length one. We're only interested in the direction, not the magnitude of the vector. All right. So now let's look at the head turn, the, the left right head turn of the non playing character. All right. So I'm going to make a vector called vector A. And that is going to be a vector two new. We are only looking at the X and the Z, not the Y. The Y is going to be up and down X and Z is going to be right and left so I'm going to say direct DIR for direction X DIR Z right so we're going to ignore the Y here All right, and we need another vector for our HRP's dot C frame dot look vector X All right so the, these two vectors, the difference between their direction that the other guy is standing and our front facing direction, right? We can just copy this. Control C and oh, I forgot the dot. All right, put a dot here. I'm going to put a Z right here, right? So we need the X's and the Z's because we're doing the back and forth looking. All right, how do we do that? Well, if you've seen other videos, I do something called a dot product. On the dot product, we'll find the angular difference between, well, the arc sine, the arc, uh, arc cosine of the dot product will find the angular difference between the two vectors. Um, you don't have to know how to do it. All you have to do is know how to do vec A colon dot vec B. Boom, there you go. You have the dot product. Just watch this formula if you don't know how to do trig. And then we're going to do the cross product because that gives us the angular difference between the two vectors but we need to know whether they're at the right or the left. 15 degrees just isn't gonna do it. So what we need is a cross product. Where's my C? Cross product. And that's like a that's like an up vector for our C frame, right? You have the, the look, you have the right, you have the up. You need three vectors in order to give direction in a three-dimensional space. So we'll say vec A cross vec B. Now you're like, great, I have no idea what to do with this. Well, we can get the angle from using a math library, a tan two, guess what that takes? It takes a cross product and a dot product, and it gives us our angle. And now we're done. We don't even have to know trig. You can just memorize how to do this. You don't even have to understand it, right? It's going to be pretty much the same every time. All right, now let's turn our head. So we have our neck. We have a C0. What do I need here? I don't need anything there. That's the C frame that's connected to the head. And we wanna, we wanna get the original position. So I'll just say C frame new. And then maybe I'll just put the neck dot C0 dot position in here. All right, that's my, that way I can, I can leave it at the same spot. I only wanna turn its head. So I'm gonna say, C frame dot angles, zero angle and zero. So we are only looking from X to Z, right? The right and the left, but this is rotation. So we're rotating on the Y. That's a little bit crazy, but let's go see what we got. We're, we're, uh, we're already at a position where we can track movement. We just can't look up and down yet. Yeah, there, he's looking at him already. Right? They just follow him around. That's pretty cool. He goes around like an owl or a monster or something, right? But we can put some limits on that. Now let's make him look up and down. See, he can't look up and down. He's just staring straight. That's not good enough. 
let's put a little let's put a little pad so we can climb up it so we can test him all right so we'll say scale move this up a little bit move this out a little bit then we can see him look up yeah that'll work all right let's go back to our our uh, script and in our script remember we have our distance so we know how far away our non-playing character and our closest player is what we need is also the height too and that's not hard all right so let's move this up we'll say local ht for height hmm what do we need we need our closest hrp's position dot y now if they're significantly different in in like tallness like if we have a tall player and a short player you might want to do this with heads but i'm going to use the closest humanoid root part and then i'll say hrp position y we only care about the y's we're only looking up and down now we have the height we already have the distance we've got that here we're going to find the up angle the up down angle so we'll say local up down angle this is his chin angle right whether he's up or down that kind of thing we we'll use this math now we don't need the <clears throat> tangent too we need an arc tangent i know we're just going to pass in the height and the distance opposite over adjacent cool and how will we do this let's just copy this Control c go to the next line and instead of the angle here this is our left right our turning angle this first angle is our up down so i'm going to call this up down angle and if you're curious if you want to do head tilting that's going to be this one you'd have to add another angle uh, c-frame angles then you can get the head tilting right and left that'd be cool too all right let's try it we're done it's going to be about 12 minutes hopefully no errors let's check to see if we have errors here we don't that's cool let's jump up here boom see that he's looking up at me that's pretty cool now next week we can do that with a shoulder pointing a weapon at somebody and uh, that would be cool too all right so i will see you in the next video and good luck